In this lesson, we will learn how to simplify some basic expressions. First, we need to examine the definition of like terms. These are terms that have identical variables. So, for example, 3x and negative 5x are like terms since the variable in both terms here is x. Similarly, 7xy squared and 4y squared x are like terms because the variable portion in each term here is x times y squared. We can also say that 5k over m to the power of 8 and k over 4m to the power of 8 are like terms because the variable portion in each term here is k over m to the power of 8. Conversely, 3x squared and 4x cubed are not like terms since the variable in the first term is x squared and the variable portion of the second term is x cubed. Now the important point about like terms is that we can combine them through addition or subtraction. Now this should make sense to us. If the variables are identical, then they must have the same value, and as such we should be able to combine them. An analogy here is the way in which we use the word dozen. Since the word dozen always represents the number 12, we can combine dozens. For example, if we add two dozen and three dozen, the result is five dozen. Similarly, since the w in the term 5w has the same value as the w in 3w, we can combine these two terms to get 8w. This process of combining terms is called simplifying. Okay, now let's practice. To simplify this expression, we need to recognize that we have some like terms here that can be combined. Here we have 3x, and here we have negative 1x. Since these are like terms, we can combine them. 3x minus 1x simplifies to be 2x. Now notice that we have positive or plus 5y here, and from it we are subtracting 9y, which gives us negative or minus 4y. So we have now simplified the expression on the left hand side to be 2x minus 4y. Here's another one. Once again we can simplify this by combining like terms. So here we have 3ab, and here we have negative 4ba. Since a times b is the same as b times a, these two terms are like terms. So 3ab minus 4ba simplifies to be negative 1ab, which we can write as negative ab. Next we have negative 7b plus 2b, which simplifies to be negative or minus 5b. So the expression here simplifies to be negative ab minus 5b. For this last one, let's first collect the terms with x squared. So here we have negative 3x squared, and we're going to add 2x squared, which equals negative 1x squared, or simply negative x squared. Next we will collect the x terms. We have 6x minus 5x, which equals 1x, and then we subtract 1x, which leaves us with 0x's. In other words, the x terms here cancel out completely. Finally, we have this constant, plus 7, and since there are no other constants to combine this with, we will leave it as plus 7. So, the somewhat lengthy expression on the left-hand side simplifies to be negative x squared plus 7. Okay, now let's simplify a different kind of expression. Here we are taking one expression in parentheses and adding another expression in parentheses. When adding two expressions in parentheses, we simply remove the parentheses and then further simplify the like terms. To simplify, we can first combine 2w and negative 7w to get negative 5w. Next, negative 10x plus 9x simplifies to be negative 1x or minus x. And finally, positive 1y and negative 1y cancel out, leaving us with no y's. So the expression on the left simplifies to be negative 5w minus x. In this next example, we are taking one expression in parentheses and subtracting another expression in parentheses. To handle this, we will first turn the subtraction into an addition. Now the terms in the first set of parentheses are left as is, 
but we will replace all of the terms in the second set of parentheses with their opposites. So we will rewrite 9x as negative 9x, minus y as plus y, and minus 7w as plus 7w. At this point, we are now adding two expressions in parentheses, just as we did in the last example. So here we simply remove the parentheses. At this point, we can simplify the expression as follows. Okay, to summarize, in this lesson, we learned that like terms can be combined. To add expressions in parentheses, simply remove the parentheses. And to subtract expressions in parentheses, we will add the opposites. In this lesson, we will learn how to multiply expressions. We will begin by multiplying a monomial by a monomial. Here are some examples of this. Now, when multiplying monomials, the rule here is to multiply members of the same family. So, for example, we will multiply constants by other constants, x's by x's, y's by y's, and so on. Beginning with the first example, when we multiply the constants 3 and 7, we get 21, and when we multiply x by x, we get x squared. On to the next example. Here the product of 5 and 4 is 20, and the product of y cubed and y to the power of 4 is y to the power of 7. Please note that if you need extra help on the rules of exponents, you might want to go review some lessons on those rules. In the next example, we have a coefficient of 8 in one term, but the other term does not have a coefficient. In these instances, the coefficient is assumed to be 1, in which case 8 times 1 is equal to 8. Next, we will multiply k to the power of 5 by k to get k to the power of 6. In the next example, the product of 6 and 1 is 6. x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 6 is equal to x to the power of 10. And y cubed times y squared is equal to y to the power of 5. Finally, in the last example, the product of the coefficients here is 12. The product of a squared and a to the power of 5 is a to the power of 7. The product of b, b cubed and b is b to the power of 5. And finally, the product of c cubed times no other c's is equal to c cubed. Next, we will examine the products of monomials and polynomials, such as those shown here. Now when we multiply a polynomial by a monomial, the rule is to multiply each term inside the parentheses by the term in front. So for example, we will take this 3 outside the parentheses and use it to multiply each term inside the parentheses. So to begin, 3 times 2x is 6x. Next, we will multiply 3 times positive 5. Now there is a reason why I want to refer to plus 5 as positive 5, and this will become evident as we examine other questions. For the time being, just recognize that 3 times positive 5 is positive 15, which we will write as plus 15. So 3 times 2x plus 5 is the same as 6x plus 15. This process of multiplying the terms inside parentheses by a term in front is called expanding. So in this question, we expanded 3 times 2x plus 5. Okay, now on to the next question. Here we'll take 7x and first multiply it by 4x squared to get 28x cubed. Then we'll multiply 7x by negative 6x to get negative 42x squared, which we will write as minus 42x squared. And finally, when we multiply 7x by positive 1, we get positive 7x, which we can write as plus 7x. Okay, one last example. First, we'll multiply negative 2x squared y by 3x cubed y to get negative 6x to the power of 5 y squared. And then we'll multiply negative 2x squared y by negative 9y to the power of 5 to get plus 18x squared y to the power of 6. Okay, now let's use what we have learned to simplify some expressions. Let's begin with this one. First, we'll expand the products here. So we'll multiply 3 and 2x to get 6x. And then we'll multiply 3 and positive 1 to get positive 3 or plus 3. 
Now we'll take positive 5 and multiply it by positive x to get positive or plus 5x. And finally, we'll multiply positive 5 by positive 4 to get positive or plus 20. At this point, we can simplify our expression by combining like terms. For example, we can add 6x and 5x to get 11x, and we can add 3 and 20 to get 23. Okay, next example. We'll begin by expanding. So we will multiply 7 by 2 to get 14, and then we'll multiply 7 by negative y to get negative or minus 7y. From here, we'll multiply negative 2y by y to get negative or minus 2y squared. And then we'll multiply negative 2y times negative 3 to get positive or plus 6y. From here, we can simplify. Since we have no other constant terms to combine with 14, we will leave that as it is. Next, we have negative 7y plus 6y, which equals negative 1y or minus y. And finally, we have no other terms to combine with negative 2y squared, so we'll leave that as it is. Please note that we can take these terms and move them around to get negative 2y squared minus y plus 14. Okay, one last question. Now to begin, I want to rewrite this expression by adding this negative 1 here in front of the second set of parentheses to show that subtracting this expression is the same as multiplying it by negative 1. Now that we have done this, we can proceed as usual. First, we'll multiply 3ab by 2b to get 6ab squared. Then we'll multiply 3ab times negative a to get negative or minus 3a squared b. From here, we'll multiply negative 1 by 3a squared b to get negative or minus 3a squared b. And finally, we'll multiply negative 1 by positive 6ab squared to get minus or negative 6ab squared. From here we can simplify. First we have these two like terms. So if we take 6ab squared and subtract 6ab squared, these two terms cancel out. Next we have negative 3a squared b, and from this we are subtracting 3a squared b. This simplifies to be negative 6a squared b. So now we're done. We have simplified the expression on the left-hand side to be negative 6a squared b. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned that we can find the product of monomials by multiplying members of the same family. And we learned that we can find the product of a monomial and a polynomial by multiplying each term inside the parentheses by the term in front of the parentheses.